Evening. Evening. As I stated earlier, and as it says in the title, we're looking at Sebastian Rogers, 15 year old autistic, autistic lad who went missing what, seven, eight, nine, nine, ten days ago now. And on Monday, the police did a uh, a press release to the reporters stating they was scaling back the search but not stopping the search just scaling it back but looking on the investigative side more right so that's never good when they start doing that Now today I went 
this is what I was a bit like coming on. I, I was watching a court case video and then I also went on Google Maps and I went to his road again. And I, I don't know how I missed it the first time. I really don't know how I missed it. Right? But I'm going to just got to get on that right now. Um, but I'll go back there again. And I was literally kicking myself when I seen it. I thought, I've searched them properties. I don't know how I missed it. But I'm going to go back and we're going to go and have a look, okay? And I'll show you. All right. All right. Now let me get this shape of you. Okay. No, I'll go down there. This is where he was last seen. Right, I'm going to take, we're going to start at the bottom here. Get my little man. Here we go. Let's drop you there. Oh, God. Right. Let's turn and we start going up here. No. And I don't know how I missed it, but I'm going to show you it. There's a camera. And where is it pointing? Let's see, mate. It's pointing down this way. Right? So... Okay. So if he walked past down here, because he lives up here somewhere, I know where he lives now, and I'll show you, because it has been added already now on Facebook, on YouTube. So if he walked down here, on the road, on the grass, this camera lying upside. Right? Right on the road. It's going to catch any car, any person walking past. Now, I've just heard that apparently doorbell cameras don't pick up movement in the dark. Right? So they don't, it doesn't catch people walking past in the dark. Well, I've seen doorbell cameras and, they do, and they, the ones I've seen have picked up people walking past in the dark. Right? But look, there's a flipping camera. You can't get no more. You know what I mean? It isn't up here in the corner here. It's right there. Right? No. No, come back. Why won't it go down for me? I'm trying to get it to go down. It won't go down for me now. Oh God, camera. What's this doing this? No, 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 no. Tell you what, I'll come out and perhaps then I can go back in. Right, but there's a camera. So how how I'm, I've missed it every time I've gone down there on the Google Google Maps, I'm doing right now. Perhaps I have seen it in my mind, it's just not registered it. Perhaps I was uh, just looking for...
um, ring doorbells, you know what I mean? Is this right there? Go up here. And then we have to turn. This is it. No, this I need to sorry. Are we going the right way? Let's see where I am. Got a code this way. Oh, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. Do I see some above that door? You know what I mean? That looks like a camera there. Is that a camera? I don't know. Anyway, let's go on up because we've got a two. Right, now as I said, there's that camera there. And have I missed it? I don't know. Because I was checking all the outsides of these properties. And I kept saying, there's got to be a doorbell camera somewhere or some sort of camera. Right? And there's one on the corner of that road. Because I thought, when I first saw where he lived, I thought, hmm, he's on the end of that road sort of thing where they live. He's near the end of that road. And I knew there wasn't a lot of houses past his house sort of thing. And I thought, I don't know if any of them have got doorbell cameras or and if they had the doors were on the wrong side, there wasn't face in the road. There's facing the other way. So I thought I probably didn't get anything on camera, you know what I mean? Now I went past here and whenever I turned round Right. This house here. No, is that the house? No, not that one, sorry. I, I used to go up here, I'd go all the way up here. Right. And every time I turned around, I could see some garage doors. And that stuck out to me for some reason, these garage doors kept sticking out to me. Right, so I'll go back down and see them. They just stuck out to me. You could see them from the end of the road. You could see these ghosts, and I don't know what it was. It's just something about them ghost doors. Weird, don't you? Know? I'm a weird person. Well, guess what? Oh, yeah. Guess who that belongs to? Guess who this property is? If you guess Chris Proudfoot and his mother and the mother of uh, Sebastian, yes, you're right. That's his garages, there's his house, and his doors around this side. Right? And I've just heard as well, they had dogs, didn't I? I just thought about it. they had dogs. Yeah, and Sebastian loved those dogs. He loved them dogs. So why would he leave a home with dogs in it? Because he loved them dogs and leave the dogs. He wouldn't. And if he were, if he went out while his mom 
found to sleep in bed. Why didn't the dogs bark? Where were the dogs kept? Were they kept in a cage, like a dog kept cage thing? Wow. Everything keeps popping up on my laptop and it's doing my head in. Stop! Thank you. Right. Now that's the home he lived in. And the reason I, I think the reason this kept coming to me as well. Because I said this house had a lot of trees around it. Go away. Right. Had a lot of trees around it. So it's like, um, it wasn't full view to the road. You, there was some trees around it. And uh, where you look at some of these other houses, look. Open to the view, you know what I mean? This one's got some trees here, but this is all open to the view. And as you go further up the road, all the houses are more open to the roadside. Right? Whereas this one is really quite easy. Even, I'm young, even if you go down a bit, go down a bit further, it's still not that easy. So let's go down a bit further. Right? Still not that easy. Still these these here blocking the view. So I think that's probably why that house stood out to me. I don't know, or was it just a feeling I got? I knew there was something about that house because every time I went on the maps and went to this street, that house caught my attention every time and this was before i even knew that was the house i live they live in this is before i even knew any of this well i said we're starting from the beginning and we are hold on i've just got to get my cannons up So that I get my dates right. right come on. So on the twenty sixth of February, Sebastian got up during the night, put on black bottoms and a black top, no shoes, got a, uh, a flashlight. And left the house. Okay. One, the dogs didn't bark. Pops are not barkers. Pops are not. Right now, he'd have to walk across here. If he come out, he'd walk that way, down, or perhaps he cut through that way. I don't know. But <clears throat> he's the major thing. His mum noticed at 6 a.m. And I've just read somewhere that the mother noticed at 6 a.m. She had a quick look for him. Then she phones her husband, Chris, who's at work, three, at, three and a half hours away. Right? They have another quick look because he's telling her, well, have you looked there? Have you looked there? So she goes round. And she's looking in the cupboard, everywhere that she hadn't thought of. She then lit, put, obviously put the phone down, right? Because then Chris said he phoned the police. Why is he phoning the police? He's three and a half hours away. The mother should be phoning the police. In that time, the mother said, she'd come out the house and she's looking around the house, <coughs> right? Around the building, going to her neighbours, asking them, all this lot right now they said they found the police so i'll tell i found the police about what half six you think no eight o'clock before they found the police 8 a.m right and um i've got it somewhere 
Where was it? I found our things. Um, oh God. I'll probably find it as I'm reading through it, don't worry. But I heard, I read it was 8 a.m. when they found the police. So what was it doing for like two hours? If she noticed him missing at six. Yes, okay, you start panicking. Is he here? Is he there? And you're looking around the house and you're looking outside. But it doesn't take you two hours. If I had lost a child, my, one of my kids had walked out of my house, I'd be phoning the police as I'm walking around my house outside. I'd be phoning the police as I'm looking in the cupboards and anywhere. You know what I mean? I wouldn't wait until I've done all that and then think, oh, well, I best find the police. Right? So apparently, they didn't, the police didn't get the call till 8 o'clock. So there's another two hours. Why do parents leave it so long before phoning the flipping police? There's only one case I know of so far. And it's a sad case, right? Sad, but we're going to get him home. We're going to bring this little boy home. He's been missing two and a half years, but I'm not going into that case. And that that mother was at work, and the father, who was looking after the kids, he phoned the police within 15 minutes. Within 15 minutes, I was looking around the house, then going outside and looking outside, phoning his wife, all this in 15 minutes. He then phoned the police. 15 minutes. Right? Not two hours. Not three and a half hours. Or whatever. 15 minutes. Now that's a father who is concerned about his son missing. You know what I mean? He's not going to wait two hours to phone the police. So... That really angered me when I seen that. Now, I've been trying to find Chris Proud's Facebook page. I haven't been able to find it. So if anyone knows the link to his Facebook page, please say. Yes, I... Possibly, but would they not have barked? Would they not have been barking if they heard someone up in a bag? Well, that's... I'm glad you touched on that, Florida... Florida... Florida Gabby. Thank you. Um, that's why... Uh, now, because when they first went to the house, they wasn't looking on this as an investigative side. They were looking on it as a boy had walked out of his home and just walked away. Right? So they was concentrating more on the search. Right? But what got overlooked was the bins. Right? The bins were overlooked. And it just so happens, when do you think the bins were emptied? Yep, if you say Monday the 26th, you'll be right. The bins were come around between, I think as I said, six in the morning, six and seven, they was empty. So if anything was in them bins, God, it's gone. It's gone off to the skip, the tip. That's why they are now looking at the tip. Because they didn't check the bins in the first place. Because the bins had already been emptied. By the time the police had been told, the bins had been emptied and they, the bin men have gone. So yes, it could have. I agree with you, it could have. But you know what? I think it was gone before then. Because don't forget, 
She was on a two and a half hour phone call with her husband from 9.40 Sunday night till 12 o'clock when the father, the stepdad told her, told the mum to put the dogs up or put the dogs out, whatever. Right? So what time did he get back? And being as she didn't phone him till six in the morning, he wasn't home then, he was still at work. What time would you put him in the bee? If that is the case. You know what I mean? It would have to have happened before he went to work. I don't know what time. See, all we know is she spoke to him for two and a half hours Sunday night while he was at work. That's been confirmed by the police and by the phone records. It's been confirmed. Right. So he was at work all night. So when she gets up at six o'clock in the morning, he's still at work because when Sebastian wasn't in the room and she couldn't find him in the house, she phoned him at work and told him Sebastian is missing. So I don't know. It had to be before he went to work. If, if that was the case, it had to be before he went to work. Whatever happened, happened before he went to work. Right? Now, this is why the police are also asking people with doorbell cameras, now bear in mind, ring doorbells only save their videos for five days. Anything after five days is gone now, right? It only saves it for up to five days. Um, whereas with me, I can take on my doorbell when someone hits my doorbell, it'll ring and it comes through on my phone, and I can even take a photo of them who's at the door, you know what I mean? And then I've got that forever if I want to keep it. Ring doorbells don't take photos. They take videos, but they don't take, because they're running 24 7, they don't take photos. So it, doesn't, it only stores it for five days. So they had to work quick to get that any images off the ring doorbells. But if you look again as well, hold on. We'll go back to this. Uh, let's sit this down. I'll get rid of this. Right. I'm coming out of the road. If you go along the road, a lot of the doors are like on the sides or very well hidden. You know what I mean? Right up there, they're hidden. So. Would the ring doorbell catch anything? I don't know. But like someone said, apparently they don't work during the night. They don't catch moving figures on the night. But I, I've seen ring doorbell working on the night time. It does catch... Well, the ones I've seen, right, they've been catching the people walking past on the night time. So... See what I mean? I have all the doors. Like, you've got the garages here, and then the doors around here. And see, there's no actual front doors. Not a lot of the houses have the front doors facing. This one's got a front door facing, and that one has. Right? I mean, that's a big house. Right, that's a big house because it's got a nice big driveway. Right. But this is what I said. I, I, I couldn't understand why there was, wasn't getting any um, doorbell footage or video footage because these are big, nice houses. 
And if you're going to spend a lot of money on a house, you're going to make sure it's well secure, aren't you? Especially in today, with today's technology. So a lot of the doors are like hidden. Or could be. Or on the side. But you just something about that house that kept. I could see the garages from me. I could see the garages from Fairbrook the road. It just stuck out like a sore thumb. I don't know why. And now I know. It, that was my inner gut feeling telling me that there's something about that house. But that's where they live. Right, and it's got to be, as I said, a lot of people have these big houses. Right? There's got to be more than just that one house with a camera that I've pointed out. But you can't see very well. Right? Because the doors are on the side, so you can't see. Or well hidden with arches and. So it's very hard to see any ring doorbells on the doors. These houses up here wouldn't, wouldn't have caught anything unless, I don't know, unless one of these houses here had a camera which went over that bit, that bit of the grey, that bit of the hill. You know what I mean? But this is the best house. This is the house that's going to get the most information off. This one. Because there it is. Right. There it is, clear as day. And yeah, I missed it. I missed it. But there it is. She could see it. She could be in this room with me when I seen that. I was going, Woo! jumping up and down like I'd won a, the lottery or something. But I thought, yes, finally, we've got a camera. Not a ring doorbell, a camera, a video that would record and would record onto a disc or something. So don't have that. Now, that's the next best one to find if there's anything. Like from they're asking from Sunday afternoon, uh, at least now from Sunday afternoon onwards. So I'm wondering, has not only are they covering their own back bung up because the bins weren't checked on the day that they're now doing the landfill, have they come up with some information as well? You know what I mean? Have they come up with some information? Say about the landfill. It's hard to say. But no, um, let's have a look now. Right. Right, I said we're going to start from the beginning, and we are. Right. So. I'm going to go back to, where is it now, this, oh God's sake, my, oh, this, this was one of the first interviews I saw on this case, the first interview, okay, so we're going to start from the beginning. Get notes and pens ready, your paper and pens ready, get your notes going. There's, there's a litany of reasons that it's important right now. There may come a time when we call on the public to come out and help us search. But right now we have plenty of first responders on scene. The best thing the public can do to help is keep sharing it on social media. If you see something, say something, call the Sioux County Emergency Communication Center at 615-451-3838 and check your home surveillance video. Just check. If you see something, call. We'll come out and look. Um, 
that that's going to be what breaks the case of some videos maybe I've seen. They absolutely are. Um, Sumner County is the greatest place on earth. I truly believe that. We have the absolute greatest citizens here. But we also have the best law enforcement relationships in the county. We, we've got people from across the state here, the TBI, Cincinnati Highway Patrol, Hendersonville, excuse me, Gallatin sent people. We have plenty of first responders. So my my urge to the public right now would be to check your home video and see it out on social media. And then... Uh, and In the meantime, um, is, when you approach this, um, when you approach this search, is it different looking for a child than an adult? Uh, it's definitely different for a child with autism. Yesterday, we consulted with uh, someone in the first responder world who does emergency, who also has children who are autistic, uh, and she comes that I didn't understand her copying. Uh, she did a lot of tips and tricks. So uh, we've had several calls from people with autistic relatives that have told us, "Hey, they thought about this." And listen, there's nothing off the table. I don't care how crazy it sounds. If, if it's going to help me find Sebastian, get him home safe to his family, I'm going to do it. And are there, what are some of those considerations that go into looking for a child with autism? Some of the things that he likes, he's familiar with. We know that Sebastian likes cats. Uh, we buy the ticker and that uh, just kind of call him and let him know we're here to help him. Uh, I, I'm sure that he could see what's going on here and be what I did. But he sees Lisa knows Sebastian. We're here to help him. There, there's no there's no indication of foul play at the moment. Go off long hole pipe. When we got that tip, we sent the team out. They thought was Sebastian, and it was not. Um, again, it's a great event. So if I see something, call no. What I can say is, as Tom says, all of the shoes are counted. Um, I'm not going to say that he's barefoot. Um, and how is how's... I cannot imagine the children. I don't know how, I don't know how they're here. I couldn't, I couldn't survive if somebody helped my kids. Managing all of this, what's been going through your guys' mind? I think Director Wider said it best. Uh, every time we debrief and talk about what we've done, we're asking what ideas do you guys have, you know, I think I'm a pretty good law enforcement officer, but I'm not the smartest guy in the room, and I know that. So if someone's got an idea, and we've had some pretty good ideas come up, and we're we're gonna we're gonna try everything we can. So uh, keeping an open mind and doing anything we can to find Sebastian. Um, and then I also am told that might be on medications as well. It definitely increases. The, the medicine is there, uh, obviously the treat is autism. So how he responds to that once the medicine is out of the system, is really not my expertise, but I do know that it's gonna have a negative effect. Uh, it definitely isn't. And is people and they see him, are they advised to move slowly or call you guys first or I guess what's the, what's the I would definitely say call us first. Uh, if both to talk to Sebastian, talk, Gonna call. So yesterday we had uh, multiple agencies. We had 220 searches on the ground, and 
we, we bring them in and go, they go through operations and they get assigned to search area. So we use a, a search program to track them and we actually, they lay tracks uh, from their cell devices and we, we know where they're at and, uh, and, and they complete those search areas come back and they get them reassigned. So what? today we'll get a count on that, but I say we're over 150 searchers on the ground today and multiple agencies. And, and THB helicopter, and I'm sure what the chief went over. Uh, helicopter, TBI swing, over. We got uh, 12 units here, uh, eight mounted yesterday, and there's no ground we can. And uh, we keep expanding that search area. And we have literally we have pounded the area, the neighborhood that, that he went missing from. Um, the neighborhood adjacent to keep it And we'll see in the number of storms, the storm, is that going to change the search or is it going to have any impact on his ability to survive? We're, we're, we're concerned about the weather because we don't know exactly what he's dressed in. And we could have some flurries tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And the, the storm, so the wet, and then you lose body temperature 30 times faster when you're wet in the air or in water. And uh, so we're concerned about that and the chance of flurries tomorrow and those drop temperatures. Um, <clears throat> we'll continue to work, work with dry clear and, uh, and we we'll actually utilize technically Swing County County and night vision that our, that our operators have. And they've been in, they've been in the field uh, for many hours at nighttime. Yeah, that was my next question. Um, how do you guys operate the search? Last night, it got dark earlier. Soon, it's going to get darker here today again. Is the search going to happen? Yeah. Flashlights, flew and typically our tactic based on the So last night we did that. Uh, not not ready yet to describe exactly did that because we may have a plot that again. Um, and then at this point, you know, what we're kind of talking about it earlier with the monitoring and the monitoring and the Uh, teenagers are resilient. Um, we're hopefully he has enough clothes on. So and, uh, um, he should rest. And uh, uh, um, he doesn't, uh, apparently doesn't sleep a lot at night. And, and he's more active at night. And, and, and you know, uh, probably sleeps a little more in the day. So we hope he's, he's laying down and resting. And uh, just um, I want him to outwalk the search. Uh, he can cook on food. Um, we're, you know, we're, we're working with that, and we're putting that in consideration when we when we create the areas of research. TBI's help, Metro Nashville's help, Road Patrol's help, our drone team, North Star's help, Wilson County's help, this coverage. Uh, the team has been phenomenal. Uh, there's, you know, there's a resource out there that can help us. We call them. We ask. Pretty much every county in the every agency in the county is from from across the state. Quite honestly, um, and I think our chief talked earlier. You know, we have a lot of people wanting to volunteer, and and we are really looking to put trained uh personnel on the ground uh, are familiar with search and, and operations and have the ability to um, perform limited rescue operations teams on standby if we if we have a rescue situation and uh so there's a lot that goes into that and we um we can track these a, a lot easier are divers still on Continue to share through the page. If you see something, something, share video. Those are really the huge things that the public can do to help us right now find Sebastian. So we did have a we had a child walk up a walk up day with a child. Artistic, they're from Watertown. The little boy wanted to know he thought Sebastian could be. And he told me very um, uh, very forthright 
where he thought he would go if he were lost. That he would go towards creeks and he would go behind buildings and, and the different he would do. And he told his mom this morning that he wanted to come up here and, and tell us where he thought so about in my opinion. Thank you guys. Right, so that was the very first, oh God, my mouse. Very first one I've ever seen. Right, and I'm trying to stop it and it won't stop. Right. I want to. You want to go this way? At JMD Dental, in the heart of downtown Minneapolis, four year old Ollie the Labrador oh, is reporting sorry. for duty. As far as his exact position in the office, right. oh, just so chill. it's usually right on top of patients. You're such a good boy. Yes, yeah, you are, buddy. April Klein is a dental hygienist at JMD. She first brought her dog Ollie to the office four years ago. When her family was in for an appointment, he was just going around checking on both my two girls and my husband. And then he just jumped up on my husband's lap after showing a bunch of patients. Once they wanted to see pictures of Ollie, I showed them the picture of him on my husband. And they started asking if they could have the same thing. I said, absolutely. It began with just a few patient requests. Oh, I'll give up. I can't find it. Several a day, once a week. Today, he's seeing six patients. Before her job in dentistry, oh, April had assumed everyone enjoyed the dentist absolutely. as much as she did. You learn really quick that this is a vulnerable spot to be in. Sometimes these patients need nitrous oxide. They need some type of sedative to actually get through their appointment. Right. He provides a canine drug. Yep. Finally really comforting to have Ollie here for yeah. sure. Uh, with visits every four months, it's safe to say Colin Campbell doesn't fear the dentist's office. His appointment with Ollie today. Right, I'll take you off all together then. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, that was the first interview I saw. I saw. And it hit a, a chord for me. It hit a, a chord in my heart. Because I said then, I thought, why would a 15-year-old autistic lad who likes routine, oh, cat, sorry, that was my cat, uh, who likes routine and everything, and he's got a happy home life from what I was reading, why would he just get up and walk out during the night? And I couldn't understand. And I still don't know till this day understand why he do it. And but then as talk, as the guys went on and I was hearing like the dogs had lost had picked up no scent of him. At outside apart from around the house, like from the front door to the to where they parked the car and things like that. They had no scent of him. And I thought, dogs, you give a dog a scent. They are highly trained dogs. Not like the sort of dogs that you get at home. They're highly trained dogs. And they know what they are doing. It's like telling a doctor, a heart surgeon, he doesn't know what he's doing, but he's been trained all his, from what, the age of 18, he's been at university and all this stuff, and gone through all the training. You're not going to say, I don't trust you, or I don't believe you, you know what I mean? They know what they're doing, and the same with the dogs. And then when I'm finding out then. There's no CCTV of him, no ring doorbell of him. I thought, hold on. So I went on to Google Maps on here and where is it now? And 
I went up and down his road, right? Oh no, come on, come on. And um, I was going right up to the end. Now I'll pull this map up and I'll stick it the other way. Let me get that one. Right? So, where are we now? Oh, yeah. And I was going right up to the end of this road. And I thought, well, okay, perhaps he walked up the road. And as you can see, there's no fencing. Now, I'm not used to that in the, in the UK. <clears throat> Unless you live on a farm in, out in the middle of nowhere, you've got fences. There's fences. Right? This place is dividing the gardens off. So I thought, well, perhaps he's walked up here and he's cut through here. Right? And gone through these trees and maybe gone up here. And there he is. Oh, anywhere. Then I, I went up this road here. Because I thought he could have cut through these trees here. Through this garden area. Up to there, and there's nothing there, there's no lights along there. I thought, well, he's got his flashlight, so he'd be all right. And into there. But then, after I did all that, that my hypothesis is we're getting thrown out the window, thrown out the door. Hi, Ryan. Hi, MG. I am. I'm English. I'm English and I live in Scotland. <laughs> and um, does my accent say so? Does it carry on English? <laughs> if you have trouble with my accent, I'm very sorry. It's a brummy accent. It's a brummy accent from Birmingham. Anyway. So that got all that information I got and went through got thrown right out the door. Oh, thank you, MG. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I'm going to put that one up. <laughs> right. And because then the mother and the stepfather did their interviews. Oh, right. Well, and I'm going to, as I said, because we're going from the beginning, we get start from the beginning, we're going through it all. We're going to have a look at these, all right? Oh, let's have a look. Yes. And, um, come on, give me these. <laughs> I've got to literally put it in. Anyway, so they did the uh, interviews, didn't they? Is this it? To... No, not. Oh, it is. No, no. Come on, give me that interview. Well, I found some of them. Yeah, this is what. I'm done. I've just got to share it. Since then, authorities have searched by air, by foot, and on. on horseback. Helicopters, drones, you know and dive to teams. Out of this again. Every time I put on silent on the task bar, I can't get back on again. I have to come out to go back into it again. Yeah. 
Rồi, save, let's have a look. I don't use this one, this one, no. Không chọn. Bấm cái này. Bấm cái này. They remain positive. They are holding on to hope that their son Sebastian will return home safely. Can you walk us through what you're thinking right now? I just want my baby to be okay. I don't know where he's at. Mom Katie broke down several times in our interview, but says her hope is strong that her son Sebastian will be found safe and return home. He's gonna walk through that door and this street will be flooded again with family and relatives all waiting to hug him, love him. And Stepdad Chris says it's been an emotional roller coaster that all started Sunday night, February 25th. Pretty normal, he was playing in his room. Um, when I told him to go to bed, he did. <laughs> um, he said, good night, mom, I love you. Katie says she went to wake up Sebastian around 6 a.m. Monday for school and he was gone. Within minutes, Katie says she was on the phone with Chris, who was working out of town, and they quickly called 911. And he's not a runner. He's never run away before. Um, I don't know why. I don't know why he walked out that door. I mean, he I don't just see something in my in the chat. Ryan. Also from Glasgow. Anyway, sorry for interrupting my apologies. Where about in Glasgow? In Glasgow, Ryan. Um, because I've got a relative down in Glasgow. His name is Ryan. Right? My daughter lives down in Glasgow with her partner. So anyway, sorry for interrupting that. Good kid. He's not he's not a mischievous child by any means. Katie and Chris say Sebastian is not on social media. While he loves to play Minecraft, they tell me he does not have any online capabilities. I asked if there was any reason he might want to leave. We've been combing over that day and even the weeks before he left, and I don't, I haven't been able to figure it out. He's, um, that morning he was laughing, he was joking. It's as if Sebastian vanished. No sign of him on any video throughout the community. Thousands of miles logged by law enforcement, canines, helicopters, even dive teams, and no sign of him. Chris and Katie tell me they've been harassed. People pointing fingers at them. You're not in this situation. You don't quite understand. Um, I wish people would step back, take a different wide open view, and not assume what they know. It's just better to stick to the facts. Are you both in the clear? I can tell you that mom, myself, and the father have worked very fully and cooperatively with all agencies across the board. We have anything that they've wanted, we have provided. What do you want to say to Sebastian? What do you want him to hear from you right now? That we love you so much and we want you to come home and you're not in trouble. Now, Katie did tell me that even though Sebastian Right. Yeah, he's picking up any vibes off that guy. Oh my god, MG. Can we uh, swap? Uh, 
And what was that? I said there's two versions. One where she went to wake and then I suppose she'd start in him. Yeah, and um <laughs> Yes, yeah, glad six degrees, yeah. Glasgow fourth. I know the fourth. Been there a few times with my daughter. I like Glasgow. Anyway, get up Glasgow. Right? I don't know if I could speak either. I said that the other day. If this was either my daughter or my son or my grandkids, I'd be so distraught. I would not be able to talk. You know what I mean? She is distraught, but I think she's just trying to get through this interview. Because people have been saying, like, being a weak, and they've heard nothing of the parents. Not one iota of the parents. So, I think, yeah, I think they, they sort of like forced into doing this interview. Like, um, look, people are saying, why, you not, why haven't you come forward? Why haven't you said something? If, she's, if you have an interview, we can squash all their rumours. You know what I mean? But to me, you're okay, Ryan. You interrupt all you want. I'd have to, yeah, yeah, I'd have to be sedated. I couldn't think about it, you know, as I said, the other night I was talking and I said how just before Christmas, you probably know then, Ryan, we went to Broughty Ferry, right, for the turning on of the Christmas lights and we lost our, my grandson. I'm not joking, my heart was leaping out my chest. I'm looking everywhere, his dad's looking one way, I'm looking another way. The mum is staying with the, back, the little one, who was just coming up to three then, in the push chair. So she was with that little one. We're scaring the crowd, the crowd of people. And um, I was just about to go up to the stage, give them a description. And I couldn't even get the description out. I couldn't get out my mouth. I couldn't get the words out. And then all of a sudden, the guy said, hold on, hold on, I think, I think the father's just found him. And my son just saw his head over in between the clouds and got, went and got him. I'm not joking. I couldn't breathe. And it was, it was only a matter of what, what say. Five minutes at the most, at the very most, say, yeah, back between five and ten minutes. But I couldn't talk. I couldn't breathe. And my son was going, are you okay? My mum's going, I'm fine. I just, I could not get my words out. So, and so I, if this happened to me, my son and my daughter were both growing up, or my grandkids, I don't know what I'd be like. I know I wouldn't be able to do a, an interview. I wouldn't be able to. But since doing this interview, he hasn't done any more. I knew he wouldn't. Because I, on the Monday, they scaled back the search. I don't know when this interview was done, whether it was done on the Sunday or the Monday. I think it was done before the Monday. I think it was done on the Sunday and released on the Monday. I'm not sure. But he did a phone call first on a live with another YouTuber. Right? And I listened to that. Yeah, I know. Seeing as my grandson disappears off the, out of an oil, 
it's like, where's he gone? And because he's got some traits of autism as well, and he's very high functioning, he's on the go 24 7. Honest to God. It's like a little tornado going around your house 24 hours a day. He really is. And um, I can't keep up with him in stores. I really can't. So we have to let him know. We have to tell him every time we go into a store, if you lose sight of me, you go to... And we point the security guards out in the store, right? Now, the security guards know me very well now because the amount of times I've lost my grandson in this store is unbelievable. Yes. He actually goes to two different places. He goes to one, which was supposed to have been yesterday. And I've got that somewhere. Where is he? Is it on here? Is it on here? Yes, yeah. It was, um, you know, I'll share this. This is on Tennessee Missing Persons. And Nick Berry's NC5 did a live today where he took a caller's question. And some interesting points came up. Uh, he's supposed to have had an interview with him. But... At the last minute, sort of thing, he back. Well, he ghosted him. He didn't turn, he didn't come on the call or anything. Just ghosted him. But I think it's because since that one interview, and then the police scaling back the search and looking on the investigating, investigative side of it, the he now got himself a lawyer. And the lawyer will say, do not do no more interviews. No more interviews. You know what I mean? Because <coughs> there's a lot of people on that. They call us uh, keyboard warriors. Right? But I swear to God, we pick up on more than what the police do sometimes. We pick up on all these little things. I've said before on another YouTube channel, they ought to, the police ought to uh, pay us to work for them because we pick up on all these little things where they don't. And we do. So we're not trained investigators. We just use our common sense. We use our head. We listen. But yes, he... What's all of that hilarious? The interviews. Really? Oh, my daughter's was playing hitting among the clothes while thinking he just joke. I was barred from the shop. Oh my god. Because I'm going to put this one up. <laughs> barred from the shop because I literally pushed the manager on his ass to get to, <laughs> to the CCTV room. Daughter thought. <laughs> oh God, you make me go. But I'd be the same. I'd be the same. I'd be wanting to see them cameras to find my child. I'd be getting them to lock the doors down. Shut the doors, lock them down. Don't let anyone in or out. Until my child, until this shop has been searched. From top to bottom. I've known kids. I worked in an Asda store many years ago. And I've known kids go behind like stacks of toilet roll, right? And they've hid behind this toilet roll to scare the people as they're coming past. I think, oh my lord. So, it's amazing what children do when I'm in a store. What is it with the step families? I've never let my kids. No. No, I must admit, like, I'm past all that now. I'm past all that dating. I can't be asked with it no more. 
and I'm quite happy to because I'd be wanting to vet everyone now. I'd want to see if they've got a criminal record. I'd be wanting to dive into their past, speak to all the family, and speak to the friends, what's he like? You know what I mean? So I would be, I don't know, I, I couldn't put, I couldn't have another man in my house knowing that my grandkids come here. I can't have that. Uh, there was a man in my life up to about two years ago until I had my operation. Then he kind of like flipped on myself up. Thank you. Anyway, so I was angry and I'm not angry. you a fighting person. I know my limits. Well, kids can be crazy for me at times. Yeah, but I can understand what families do. But to sit there like that guy was sitting there so calm. And she's, she's just willing this interview to be finished. She did not want to be there. She wanted that interview finished. Right? Because she can't think of nothing else but her son. And everyone keeps saying, I've been hearing a lot of YouTubers say, well, what time did he leave for work? He left for work on the Sunday evening. Because if you remember, they had that two and a half hour phone call from half half nine, was it? Half nine till twelve o'clock ish. And he was at work then on the Sunday evening. But I I couldn't trust anyone around my grandkids no more. I couldn't. Exactly. And to be honest with you, I'm happier on my own. People go, don't you get lonely? And I go, and like I've had friends here, and I go, and I pick my TV controls up, right? And I say, see these? They go, yeah, TV control. I went, yes, it's mine. I have control of what I watch on TV. So I'm quite happy being on my own. It is a sad world. Yeah, it is why. It is really is. I'm I'm quite happy. In fact, when when my family come and visit me, like my son and whatever, I love seeing them. But I also love seeing them saying, bye. <laughs> you know what I mean? Anyway. <laughs> if you find one at uh, uh, Ryan, can you tell me I love one that does the cookie? But I've got my. Uh, has anyone else got one of these, the um, air fryers? But mine's like a little oven. It's not one where you pull the pans out. Mine's like a little oven with rack thing and everything. I've not used my oven. I've not used my cooker or oven in over a year because I use my air fryer. I've got my microwave. I've got my toasted sandwich thing. I've got my egg timer. Everything is there that I need to cook a meal. I don't need to use my stove and I don't need to use my oven. I've got my air fryer and everything else. <laughs> this will get married 22 years. Yeah, congratulations, MG. Congratulations. I managed 19 years before I separated from my husband. Yeah, 19 years because my son was 18. Yeah, 19. Anyway, let me get back onto this. Right? Nick Bearers. NC5 did a live today where we took a caller's question and some interesting points came up. I think I know who he's on about. 
Nick has talked to Sebastian's stepfather at length and had an interview scheduled with him yesterday. So this would have been 18 hours ago, that was yesterday. So this would have been, what day we on now? Thursday, then. So that would have been Tuesday. Right? Scheduled to be yesterday. As of now, Chris Proudfoot has completely ghosted him. No calls or texts returned. Nick speculated as to this, as to why this. Maybe law enforcement caught some inconsistencies. Well, if they didn't, what the hell are they doing with his story from previous interview? And now he's scared to talk publicly. In the interview, parents mentioned he went out the front door. They also mentioned the door was locked. How do they know? How do they know he went out the front door? Did Sebastian have a key? Why did they? Why didn't their dogs bark? Right? I've got two cats. And believe me, if I move out, move out of this living room or when I get up in the morning, they are right behind me. No one gets up in this flat without my cat eating them. Nick also brings up a good point about the lack of camera footage of Sebastian leaving. Yeah. I pointed one out at the end of the road and it hits the end of the road where it's quite light as well and well it'd still be dark but not hidden with trees right now ring cameras don't pick up movement in the dark i i've seen ring cameras where they do pick up in the dark i'm sorry but they are saying they think sebastian has a flat flashlight so that's odd exactly if it's that dark that a camera won't pick up movement, then he's going to have a flashlight on. Chris is in a lengthy six-year custody battle, six years with his ex-wife, which includes restraining orders, according to Chris, and several close to the ex. She has not been contacted yet. The question about when Chris Proudfoot went to work in Memphis has still not been answered. No, we, apparently he was at work on the evening because he had that two and a half hour phone call. But we don't know exactly when he left. It's very important detail that we do not have. I'm sure law enforcement does. Well, I hope so. Right? Now, these are all good points here. This, this is being brought up. Well, I'm really happy for you, MJ, because I tried with my marriage. As my daughter put, told her dad after we split up, this is the exact word, she said, Dad, you're a brilliant father, but a crap husband. And that's what she said to me, the money the word she used. Brilliant father, but crap husband. And he wants to use a brilliant father. I can't doubt, can't doubt him on that. Anyway, the question about Chris Proudfoot went to work in Memphis has still not been answered. Right, we've seen that. Someone called in and brought up a bruise they seem to see on Sebastian's neck in his most recent photo. That's not confirmed, obviously. Well, I went through all the photos and the most recent one was the one where, which is on the missing poster, right? And I've zoomed in on his neck and everything and I can't see nothing. And I did it to all the photos I've got of him. The one sitting at the table, everything. Yep. Don't blame you, MG. You can't. It, you need it for your own safety, if anything. Your own security. You know what I mean? Today's society. I'll get off. Oh. 
Uh, I swear to God, this is doing my head. It's not. Something's come up on the screen and it won't shift. I'm trying to get it to move and it won't move. Oh, God's sake. Thank you. So, right, but I've looked on his neck and I can't see anything. Nick says, and I agree, unfortunately, he will be stunned if Sebastian is truly wounded from home and no one else is involved. Wow, well, if that lag walked from that house, he must have flipping floated. It must have flew. It must have flew away because he'd left you no know, scent. He says if stepdad is the cause of his disappearance, it is almost certain the mother would also have to know. I don't know. You know what I mean? It's hard to say, isn't it? As of now, we know dogs picked up scent around his home, which is to be expected. Yeah. When scents end abruptly end, it's because the person left the ground, i.e. in a car, etc. I've personally seen this in other cases I've worked. Right now, I can't see no photos on that neck. And I've seen him on this photo and this one. I thought maybe that was a, a bruise there. Right. And I have gone in and I'll go in here. But I think it's like a shadow. Here. Not this bit. Here. Then by what would be called the Adam's apple. So it could be a shadow. I can't see any other sort of bruising on the photos. I can't see nothing on this one. And I definitely don't, I can see from here, I can't, there's no bruising on that one. And if it's going on this one. No, I can't see any bruising. It looks all more like shadows, if anything. Do you know what I mean? So. You know, it doesn't look like a bruise, does it? Uh, it you know what I mean? It's more like a, a shadow where the chin could be thrown down a shadow or something. So I don't know. But well, anyway, where am I going again? No. What am I going Okay. I lost it again. Right. I'm going to go here. To the landfill. Now, I know why they're searching, well, there's several reasons they're searching the landfill. It's the one from Costco on Saturday. That's this one, isn't it? Hold on. Isn't it this one? That one. That's the one that was took on the Saturday. Not, and that looks like a shadow. You know what I mean? That, if that was a bruise, a lot of people would see that. And someone might even have questioned it. You know what I mean? That is a bruise. If that's the one they're wrong about. Right under the chin. Let's have a look again. I'm going to have to go back, aren't I? Let's go back. 
Here. Here. Is that the one? To me, it looks like a shadow, not a bruise. Well, I don't know. Is it... Is that where you're wrong about, MG? Is that where you're wrong about there? Hmm. Yeah, I see what you mean now. Now yeah, I'm looking at a different angle. I can see like... I don't know, you know, that could be from where someone's grabbed him by the neck. Because it, if you look, if this, this is true, if you look, he's got like marks here. And a mark there. And a mark there. That could be the thumb. And the fingers grabbing and boiling it. If you think about it. So. No way. Oh God, where are we? Yeah, they're looking in the landfills because when they first went to the house on the day we can call it missing. Right? When they first went there, I'll get to this. Right? When they first went to the house and the first report is missing, they treated it as um Like a run away. A child has just walked out the house. So. It's. Well. I'm just lost my train of thought there. Yeah. They treated it as a run away. So. But empty. They didn't think about the bins. Because guess what? Guess when the bins were emptied. Yes, on the Monday, the guy he was reported missing, the bins were emptied. Between... Before the police were even informed, those bins were emptied. So... I hope to God they haven't done that. I hope to God that the mother isn't involved in this because that father, when you listen to that call, that is a plea. He's pleading for help to find his son. You know what I mean? It broke my heart listening to that. So... It broke my heart because when she said, what does your son mean to you? And he said, it's, he's his life. You know what I mean? That's his only child. That's his only child. And if someone has harmed this child, I will never believe him. Yeah, they are expensive. Exactly. They wouldn't just go there because I they didn't search the beans in the first place. You know what I mean? They go there only if there was a reason. Yes. They need a search warrant and they have to have probable cause. Exactly, MG. So they're not just going to, you know what, we didn't check, we didn't check the bins the day went missing, we'll do the landfill now. They're not going to do that. They've got to have a probable cause to have 
the ones to go there to do the search. So, has someone caught something? Like, no one else asking for them to come forward with any video cameras or anything from the Sunday afternoon. As soon as I heard that above, they're now looking for a body. I knew that. They're looking for a body. They want proof of life. They wanted to see if he was still alive Sunday afternoon, when apparently he come back from their little running about doing errands or whatever. They wanted to know. Mm. The bio dad, I'm not heartbroken, isn't it? And you know, his aunt, that's the sister to the bio dad, she's heartbroken by it as well. Because she was so close to that line. But I was watching these all these videos earlier on another YouTuber site. And they played the, the interviews by the parents, right? And then they played the father's phone interview. And the guy on the his YouTube it was, he kept stopping. Wow, that tells a different story doesn't it and i'm sitting here going i'm nodding to the tv i'm watching it on my tv and i'm nodding and i'm going yep see the stepfather had quite a good relationship with the father that they spoke to each other the bio dad said something totally different it's like the song is missing and he makes, he gets, they don't keep in touch daily. Well, like one phone call a day. If I was a mother, I'd be on the phone to the father, the bio father, every day, all day long. Have you found anything yet? Where are you looking? You know what I mean? In fact, I wouldn't even be in the house. I'd be out there on my hands and knees, just going through them bushes. I'd be looking up in the trees, shining a lamp up in the trees, everything. And do you notice what the father said as well? Keep your head up and your eyes open. Meaning head up. Look up in the trees. Look up in the trees. He could have been up in the trees. He could have been sitting there watching everyone doing this grand search. You know what I mean? All we know. So... But I do feel bad for the dad. I really do. And that was a heartfelt plea. Like when he's, you heard him say, he did another interview with someone else. Right? And he said, the father turned around and said, if someone is holding you and you get the chance, run. You run to the first. Tell them your name. Tell them to phone the police. But you run. You know what I mean? You haven't heard me. Nothing from the uh, mother by that. Nothing. But then again, she's, she's a total wreck, isn't she, the mother? How was there a good relationship when bio dad just took mum back to court in January? Are you joking me? I didn't know about that. I thought that was the um, stepfather taking the mother for full custody, the, his ex-wife for full custody. But if that's the case, then there wouldn't be a good relationship, would there? Perhaps the son wants to live, wants to go and live with the dad. And from what I can understand as well, I'm sure the weekend he is, you know, he went missing on the Monday. That weekend before he went missing, 
He was supposed to be at his dad's, but he didn't go because his dad had to work. Right? And that's why I'm thinking, did the son play up about it? You know what I mean? Not seeing his dad or anything. Did the son say, I'm going to go and find my dad. I'm going. And they tried to stop him and something that's happened. No, they didn't. They, what they said was totally different to what the bio dad said. It, it's like, you know, be his stepdad. He said, if people want to know about what's happening in my previous case with his ex-wife, they've just got to ask, right? So what did the interviewer do? She asked him a question about it and he didn't answer it. He didn't answer the question. I thought, and everyone's going, I thought you just said, if you want to know, just ask. So she did. And then you're not answering her. So um, there's something about that step down. I'm sorry. It's just not. Ooh. What is it about stepdads? As Ryan said, there's something about. There's no way I could have another man in my life. If I was younger, there'd be no way. If I had to be single from the age of 20 summer, I'd be single. Because I couldn't trust having another man in my life, not with my grandkids. You know what I mean? Because my grandson is is so hyper. And you've got to be able to understand him and accept him for who he is. And I don't think a lot of people will. You know what I mean? They're setting their ways too much. They couldn't put up with him. And I'm sorry I'm not having anyone like that around him. So, but it's just something about that stepdad. He's too calm. Too calm. He didn't try and reassure. The only time he reassured her was near the end when they said something about how the police had done everything they can. And she turned around and said, but they haven't found him, have they? And he turned around and said, they will. They will. That's the only time he gave her any reassurance. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 do, I feel sorry for parents with young kids today. I really do. I really do. Because you've got to know who you are bringing around your family. You can't just invite any old Tom, Dick or Harry into your home. You know what I mean? You've got to know what that person, who that person is, what he does, what his frame of mind is like. Like you could say to someone, do you like children? They could really, they don't. They just say that so they keep on your good side. Yeah. As I said, there's um there's another case. I'm not following it. I've, I'm following it through other YouTubers. And when the father found out his little boy was missing, within 15 minutes, I've been searching the house, searching the grounds, outside and front, and phoning the mother who was at work. He phoned the police within 15 minutes. They didn't wait an hour they didn't wait two hours now i've read today that the police was only up in the morning and yet they say they phoned straight away no they didn't because she was up first at six looking for him for about five minutes or so then she found the her husband then she started looking again and then and he phoned the police apparently but the police didn't get the call till eight o'clock are you joking me? 
I'm not dog. That's weird. That's something's not right there, is it? No, if that's true, then there's something not right there. I know I read that, that the stepdad didn't the next one. I just think he's too controlling. I honestly believe he's very controlling. And I can't put up with people like that because I'm me. I'm my own person. And no one I used to say to my husband, rest his soul, no one tells me what to do. No one. And he never even got away with it. He tried it once or twice. And my mum turned around to him once. And she said, because he said something to me while we was at my mum's. And he got, you know that look we give our husbands when they said something? They're not supposed to say. You know that look, right? My mum turned around to my husband at the time and said, you haven't learned, have you? You haven't learned. Because no one... I said, once I left home, no one is going to control me. The only people who could tell me what to do was my parents. And when I left home, I don't care if I was mad or not. He's not going to tell me what to do, what to say, what to wear, where to go. I didn't tell him what to do or, or say, because I trusted him. And I said to him, you either trust me or you don't. And if you trust me, then there's the door, walk through it. So I think now. I haven't had them say I can hear Oh please. Um what's my email address? Oh uh how can I get my email? I don't want to put my email address on here. Um Oh, do you know what? Go for it. If I get any weird emails now, I'll just block them all. I'll, I'll put it on here, on chat. Please don't email me any weirdos, okay? And we bring you to it down so I can uh, then delete it. <laughs> Come on. Please don't email me unless you've got information on this case or any of the other cases I'm doing, please. Right. Let me know when you read it, I can delete it then. I think I can. Yeah. I can delete it once you've written it down. Let me know. But, um,. I'll have to try and remember my every email address that I use for this personally. Thank you. That was quick. Oh, come on. What am I doing? No, get up. Get up. God's sake. Oh, God's sake. Putting myself in time out, yeah? <laughs> Thank you, I. <laughs> No, that's my, oh, God, it still hasn't done it. Why hasn't it done it? Delete comment. Thank you. What? No. God, no. MG. Oh, God, what have I done? MG. I've stupid mouse. What have I done? How can I get MG back? MG, I mean, I think mean to ban you. Um, how can I get you back? Oh God! Is there any way I can find someone? Where have I banged on? I haven't banged you. Oh, I. How can I find them? Oh, I'm putting time out, I'm probably. Oh, 
Oh, I got banged him, G. Why? How can I get it back? I should be able to get in the back office somehow, and I don't know how. Oh, God. How do I get this back? Oh. All right, let's see if there's anything here I can do to get this back. No, it's my mouse, it's stupid fucking mouse. I can't use the one on the other. I'm trying to get it back. Right, so, okay, thanks. Oof. I don't know what happened. Um, right, who are we now? 
So that's the Tennessee Facebook thing, right? Come on. But I'm trying to find this one. You know what? I've lost it all. I've lost it all. I'm going back to my map. Go back to my map. And let's jump and put something up there. But you know, um, as I was saying, so there's no way unless he flew, he got wings and he flew, there's no way he, he left that house unattended, if you know what I mean. And that's why they're searching this tip area now. You know, as, it said she i'll have to check my block block list i'll have to find out anyway where my block list is if ever i need it in future because i don't know how to find it but um thank you ryan anyway so what does everyone think about that about him you know what i mean Compared to the biofather, the biofather is literally pleading for his son to come home. His mother is a total, in a total meltdown. And the bio dad is just sitting there as calm as, calm as anything. I just don't understand what's going on. You know what I mean? But this here is a lot of good points on here. And I do think it's because he's now got a solicitor or lawyer and the lawyer has told him no more interview. But why don't he just say that to the people, say, look, I'm sorry, I can't do these interviews. I've been told by my, I've been advised not to do any more interviews. Why can't you just be polite enough to do that? And a six year custody battle, that's a long time. Which includes restraining orders. Okay. That question about when Chris went to work, he went to work on a Sunday early Sunday evening because they know he's at work when she phoned in at half nine twenty to ten. They've got the phone calls to say that. You know what I mean between the two. So and as we know we we, everyone leaves the scent, everyone, whether you got shoes on, socks on, no shoes on, barefoot, whatever, if you've got wellies up to your knees, you're going to leave a scent. And to have no scent past that house, it's not possible. Not possible. N no. I thought that because to notice in the interview, he said, 
I didn't, it said to my life, I didn't expect it to go like it did. Do you, do you remember that bit where he was talking and he said he didn't expect the, like what happened to go off like it did? All uh, right, okay. So, um, He's definitely doing something. You know, yeah. He said, and, and I thought, I thought that was weird when he said that. Hold on, you, you're going to report your child missing, but you're not going to expect all this media attention. Uh, where are you from? As soon as you report a child missing, especially in UK, uh, USA, right? Especially when an amber alert goes out, the media will get on to me. In the UK, totally different because they don't have anything like amber alerts or anything like that. We tend to find out about missing child children sort of like two or three days later. You know what I mean? Or if a child has been on a lie door. And I have to use certain words because if I don't, I can get, YouTube just won't let this video go through. So I have to be careful with the wordings I use. Otherwise, this channel will be blue because my language can be a bit full on. A bit full on my language. So... I'm having to learn the new saying, effort. So, but it's just not on. I don't understand why. What could this like have done? So bad. For anyone to want to kill him, to want to live him. What could he have done? And am I wrong in saying exactly? Am I wrong in saying there's two other children as well? Because I'm sure I know I read somewhere there was a ten and um, a twelve year old or something like that. And it's not from his bio dad because his bio dad said he's got no other, other children. So, I don't know. I haven't been able to find any. Any time I dig anything up like that, about their other children, it just comes back with the same story that I read the first time, and I don't trust that story. Yes, I, I do. I do as well. I, I'd love to one day wake up and find that he's been found. As well, and then, then I swear to God, if that happens, I would push every button I could to help the father get custody of him. Because if he's safe and someone did pick him up and take him somewhere, and he's safe and they find him, I'd like to know why he went. Because you wouldn't leave a home if you're happy. But I'm sure he's supposed to go to his dad's that weekend before he went missing. But he couldn't because apparently the dad was working. But I can't see that. I can't see the dad putting work before his son. I really can't. Being as he only sees him, what, twice a month? actually get to see him twice a month. So he doesn't seem that regular. When she said, oh, he sees his dad regular, I thought he saw him like, maybe once or twice a week, you know what I mean? Perhaps his dad popped over after work or when he come home from school, his dad would pop over before his tea and see him or something like that. 
But no, he don't. He sees him two weekends a month. And he probably phones him every night. And that big fancy phone. Right? Is that his phone? Right? And then to... Will you stop saying that I've looked it up? He's not. He's a mechanic. He's a mechanic. I'm going to pull it up. I swear to God. Oh, God. That's what I did. Oh, man. So I was told that at first. Right? Where was it? I seen it now. What's this one? Yeah, here's that headline. This is the headline that got me. If someone has you, run. Sebastian Rogers' father hopes his son hears his plea. But let's see what it says here about the father. Oh, come on. It's like he wouldn't answer any questions as when they asked him, what are your thoughts on how Sebastian left the house? He wouldn't answer that, would he? Yeah. Got it, yeah. Got it, yeah. Roger said Sebastian going off on his own doesn't make any sense. Nothing is adding up. I don't know what is going on. Is there foul play? I don't know, Roger said. I know I don't know anything. Nothing makes sense right now. Right, but um Oh, where did I read it? That is a mechanic. But you no, know, someone told me I did hear he worked for the collection. Right? Yeah, sorry, I must. I don't know what I did there, MG. I don't know if I put you on time out by asking. I'm, I was trying to delete that comment, that message I put up, and this stupid mouse has a mind of its own. If it had legs, I think it would get up and walk. Anyway, I bet he has a theory there was a, there was a reason he was Yeah, there must be a reason for him wanting full custody. Right? There must have been a reason because... Your head's spinning. I've got his case. I've got Elijah. I've got... Audrey... You know, that one's on the back burner at the moment, Audrey Cunningham. But I've got some information on them. I've got the ever young girl that's just been found. I've got another young girl I was talking about earlier. I've got about six, five, six cases at the moment going on in my head. But, um, you know, there must be something. Perhaps the sun is set. You know what I mean? Like, you know how the stepfather said, in our, in my house, we don't, we don't let him have the internet, right? Now, I'm wondering, you know when he goes to his dad, does his dad let him go on the internet? Because he said they play the games, don't they? They play video games. So does the father let him go on the internet? 
because I think that isolation, not letting, he don't socialise with anyone. He's got a couple of friends at school. He's got no one at home. He's got no internet. All he's got is a TV with either films on or programmes. I bet they monitor what he watches there. You know, if they can monitor what he's watching on TV, why can't they monitor what he watches and does online? They could say, okay, you can have the internet, we've got the cat laptop here, but you have to sit in the living room where we can keep an eye on you. You know what I mean? Set perimeters on the on the tablet so they can't or on the laptop so we can't go on to certain sites. So we can't go on to certain chat sites and things like that. Yeah, I've, I've finished that one, Harmony, Harmony rang out. Well, that one isn't quite finished, Jeff. That one isn't quite finished because they've not had their body. And the mum's not giving up until they, they find the body. But, um, you know, there's so many cases going on. It's just... And then you've got that summer wells, you know what I mean? Summer Wells, Summer Moon, Utah Wells. You know, why on earth no one's being arrested for that? I don't know. I won't do that one. Yeah. I pray that one day that Harmony Ring I, all these little children that are missing, where the parents have got something involved in it. Yes. She's the one who brought me to it as well. I was watching it on YouTube first. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to start my own. I, I'm on YouTube. I'm going to start my own channel. But, you know, she brought me. Yes, that's the other one. That's, that's a mother who is grieving for her son. You hear it in her voice when she goes, comes on YouTube start chats, you know what I mean? You hear it in her voice, she is dying inside. And how she gets through each day, I do not know. Right? There's too many, and this is only scratching, scratching the surface, really. These cases that we've just mentioned are only scratching the surface. There were so many more. But I won't I won't do anything on Michael Vaughan, monkey, and I won't do anything on Summer Moon Utah Wells. Because I think there's enough YouTubers out there, good YouTubers, who are doing it. You know what I mean? I don't think I'll give a, give Michael all summer any justice. Didn't get any justice to their case. Everything that's been said has been said, really, until the. But there's so many. Well, look at that one I was talking about this this afternoon. The one who's been missing for what eight nine months, and it's only in the past three to four weeks that the police have now started looking properly when they should have done it. At the beginning, they are now doing it now. So, I don't know. I think this case is it's not going to have a happy ending. I hope it does. Don't get me wrong. I hope it does. And I hope to God if it doesn't, I hope and pray the mother is not involved. All right, I'll go. I'll write that one down. I'll write that one down. P I T T Y Escape. I'm not sure if I did, heard of that. Right? 
not sure if I've heard of that one before. I think I have. So, but I, I'm fairly new. I'm really new to this. I've done quite a few videos, but I'm still new to this. So, but I won't do anything just for clickbait. You know what I mean? That's why I won't do, like, I could do a video on Summer Wells easily. But as soon as I put her name in that title, it's clickbait. Exactly. There's too much drama when it comes to some of them, some of Wells. Too much drama. And too much in-house bickering between different YouTubers. And I don't want that. I really don't. And if anyone even tries coming here and bringing any of that drama onto my side, they will be kicked off. I don't care if I've only got five people. They'll be gone. I'll have a look when I come out, when I finish this, which I'll be doing soon. Because, as I said, okay, we've looked at the videos of the mum and the stepfather, and I would have done the one about the father, but you know what? I can't watch, I can't even sit and listen to that no more, because I break down. I haven't got the tissues with me, and I break down in tears, I always do. Even that title there, the heading there, if someone has you run, it's telling you some that if someone has you to run. I'll have a look. Honest, I'll pop on. I'll, I'll go and subscribe to her. So then I'll see her updates. But I think a lot of YouTubers started good. Some of it, some of wells. I think a lot of YouTubers started around about that time. And it's good. It's good that the word's getting out, you know what I mean? So many people talk, spoke about it. But I wish more, it's like, I heard about this case the day he went missing. And I heard it through thread time, right? And by then, I've not heard of him, this case that day. I've been on YouTube. I've not seen anything until I've seen on Tread Time. Right? And then I was doing this. And then um, all the other channels started picking up on it. I thought, great. Come on. You're here. You've got a YouTube channel. Use it to some, put it to some use. Stop all this tittle tattling between each other, right, and do put your channel to use, right, so, um, well, it's like that Harmony Montgomery, right, I went through the whole court case with that, I've got it all on my YouTube channel, and I've just uploaded it all to my Facebook channel. I started up a Facebook for this page, right, for this, and I've just sat there, you know, when I was supposed to be doing myself something to eat, sat there uploading all those videos to it. But I've got them all on there. But no one, I've been following that case from the beginning, not on YouTube, but I've been watching it through YouTube, Harmony and Montgomery, from the beginning. When the mother was calling out for, for help and all this stuff. So when I decided to do this, I thought, I'll do harmony. That's the one that Noah was talking about as far as I knew. Because I hadn't seen nothing on YouTube about it. Yeah. It's the same name, same pic. Okay. Well, actually, I've changed the picture. It should be changed to bear. Um, uh, it's the same name, I do. It, the link is, uh, where's the link? Where's my Facebook? 
Oh, come on. Bye. Uh, that's right. Oh, uh -huh. oh, give up. Um, Tell you what. No, it's not gonna let me. It's still got like a little woman detective picture, but it's not the same one as on here. It, I did change it, but it hasn't altered yet on here. Right? So. All right, so yeah, I'll screenshot it now. All right, just the top, so you can see what it's like. So that's what my little picture is now. That one, but the background picture's the same. Okay, and the name's the same. But, um, oh, God. I thought, and I've uploaded, um, I sat there and I thought I should really be getting something to eat. What's this here? Oh, this is pictures of the landfill. Hold on. Yeah, it's been strange. It's there. You see, this is the Tennessee missing person one hour ago. Right? So, there's one picture. I hope to God he isn't. You know what I mean? I really hope and pray he's not. Because that is just so not right. Right? These are exclusive photos of law enforcement on the ground at the trash landfill. And that's in Kentucky. Yeah? So hasn't that crossed state lines? I'm trying to find out if it tells you on here when the, um, yeah, it says here, I learned that trash in the Stafford Court neighbourhood where Sebastian lives is picked up every Monday between 5 and 6 a.m. and it was sent to that Kentucky landfill. Isn't that coincidence that she gets up at 6 a.m. and he's not there? Hmm. This means all the trash from the neighbourhood dumpsters, including the trash being at Sebastian's home, was picked up and hauled away before the team was even reported missing. There could be some in there that of his that belong to him that they've just thrown in the trash you know what i mean but they said right they were scaling back the search right and the they would go out they would send out the necessary necessary um Oh, organisations to whatever 
Mas nem aqui. Olha. Já por lá lá no fio. As MG. Pointed out earlier. Then you need a warrant. Right. To get a warrant. You have to have probable cause. Or something like that. And then you need. Manpower. To search it. It's not cheap. They are not going to look there just because they didn't, just because the bins were emptied on the Monday. They're not going to, you know what I mean? They're looking there now because they are looking for a body. There's nowhere else. But like I said, if something happened, if all that stepfather went to work, on the Sunday evening, or Sunday afternoon, whenever he went to work, we know he's at work at half nine at night. It takes three and a half hours to get there. So you had to leave about half five, six o'clock. To be at work for half nine, you had to leave about half five, six o'clock. Right? Who's saying something didn't happen in the afternoon? And then they took the car, buggy with him in his car. And he's got to give him somehow along the route. Right? We don't know this. So, but he's definitely not in that area where he lives. He's not. And I feel bad for the father. That little boy was that, that father's life. He, he lived for that little boy. You know what I mean? But if the mother has anything to do with this, I would be gutted. Because I don't think she has, but I'd be, but she must have some knowledge. She's got to have, because if he went missing before he went to work, then obviously he didn't go to bed at nine o'clock, like she said. The only way he could have gone to bed, like she said, at nine o'clock, and then gone missing, is if the stepfather come back during the night, got Sebastian, took him out of the house, and took him away and went back to work. But that's like seven hours around trip. Not possible, it'd be missed. Right, I'm writing all these down. <laughs> I like YouTube channels that have no drama. Because I don't like drama. So, I don't know what everyone else is thinking on this. I think we've lost Ryan. Bye. But it'd be interesting to know what anyone else thinks about this, what they think about the stepfather, the mother, and how they feel about the father. I can't, I will play that video again, that recording, but it's, it's just upsetting me too much. I can't. Can't do it. Because when I was watching that video of the stepfather and the mother, and I was talking about Sebastian and what he was like, what he liked to do, how stubborn he was, and all this like you know what I thought of I thought of my grandson because what they were saying how they're describing their their her son it's just like my grandson he's stubborn he's on the go 24 7 but he's loving he's very loving right but it's too, 
his strength is too much. Sometimes he can, he knocked me over once. I'm, I'm now down, so he can run into my arms, and he can run in at me, and I've gone flying backwards. And they go, oh, you okay? I said, don't worry about me. It's a little thing okay. Because he came back, he came falling on top of me. And I'm wondering, how did he got hurt? But that's the strength he has in him. You could be standing up and he can knock you over. But, yeah, he's got punching. See, and I can't listen, I can't, I can't do it. If I've got a thousand views, I might do it. <laughs> but no, it's out there. If anyone wants to listen to it, please go and listen to it. It is out there. And but this, where is it? Uh, is it this one? Oh, that's just an update, wasn't it? Yeah. That's just. Tennessee updating because I've got them on my page. Yeah, this one here. Cutie one. Brilliant. No nonsense. Right. So. Uh, where's this one coming from? It says here, investigators with the Sumner County Sheriff's Office are searching a land for Please, is that in a different state, Kentucky? Is that, any, is that cross state line? Because if his body is found there, wouldn't that be bring the FBI into it more again? But they've got, it says here, official state that there is no specific information that indicates evidence related to the search with Sebastian may be there. Well, I'm sorry, you would not go and get a warrant. You've got a probable cause or something like that to get the warrant. And you're now trying to tell us it's got nothing to do with Sebastian. It has got everything to do. I'm oh, sorry. It's got everything to do with him. They said it's precautionary measure to eliminate possible options and questions. Yes, at least now the car said, well, did you search the tip? They can say, yes, we've done that. Right? Clue, tracking down and tracking garbage. Here it is, it says here, his mother reported him missing around 8 a.m. She found him missing at 6 a.m. So why did she wait so long to let the police know? Why did I do that? Why did I wait so long? Yeah, we know better when it comes to landfills. Right, then I can find my Facebook again. Um. <laughs> uh... Oh, I can't, I can't do it on here. I'll have to do, I'll have to try and if I can't. Please request. But no, um, I've accepted. But 
it, I knew it, I read somewhere about that. I knew it, I, I knew my eyes weren't playing up. I know I'm getting old, but I knew my eyes weren't playing up. So why wait for two hours before phoning the police? I can only say maybe half an hour because you get up, you find your child not in the room, so you're looking all around the house. He's not in the house. So then you start looking outside, around the house, in the back garden area, in the front area, right? And you go and ask neighbours, maybe. But before I even ask my neighbours, I'd be on the phone while doing all that. You know what I mean? I'd be on the phone within five, ten minutes of me finding my child not in the house. while doing everything else so why wait for two hours it didn't search the garbage because there was no garbage to search that's why they didn't search it because there was no garbage and because there was no garbage and because they were looking at it as a missing child a, a lad who had just walk out the house to go off somewhere, you're not thinking landfill. Oh, perhaps he's walked out the house and gone to a landfill. No, the only reason they've got a probable cause and it's so uh, between 5 and 6 a.m. and she gets up at 6 a.m. and he's not in his room. Bit coincidental, isn't it? There's a possibility some evidence was disposed of in the bin. There's a possibility there was a, a body in the bin. Oh. In the meantime, authorities were back at the family home on Thursday. What going on? Thursday, isn't it? Is it Wednesday or Thursday? Probably Thursday. Which is today. Right? In the backyard, appearing to take photos. Ooh. But at the same time, authorities appear to be moving forward with a possible criminal investigation. They've named no sub suspects, and detectives say the Sebastian's family has been cooperative. Yeah, of course they have. As this investigation continues to evolve, authorities are still doing going through security camera videos from homes in the area, and they do continue to depend on tips from the public. I always put this phone number now. Any phone numbers I always put onto the description when I upload the video to YouTube. So it's always there. But they wouldn't just go and search a landfill. They wouldn't. Unless they had reason to do so. And to think this. This here is the last photo of him. That was the one they took on the side. Yeah, cooperative doesn't mean always means truthful. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. You can be cooperative, which doesn't mean like I could say, yeah, come in my home, you can do what search wherever you want, but it doesn't mean I'm gonna be truthful to you. Yeah, um, Yeah, so it's the eight o'clock as well. Why did she wait till eight o'clock in the morning to phone the police? Making sure that the garbage is all been took away properly. Give me two hours to get to Kentucky. So, and for a child that doesn't like getting dirty why would you leave the house 
with no shoes. Right? Why would a child who doesn't like books and flies leave a house with just um, a, like a searchlight thing? I, I exactly. Right? I'd be searching and calling 911 at the same time. So why did they wait till 8 o'clock? The stepfather said the mother phoned him. He was on the phone while she was looking through cupboards and whatever because he said, could you be behind me on the other side of the bed? Could you be here? Could you be there? So she's on the phone to him while she's doing all that. She then comes off the phone and he phones the police, he said. He phoned the police. But... Here. Now that would have been what, say, half six? Quarter to eight the latest? Uh, quarter to seven the latest? It's, it's here that there's, oh, where was it now? But his mother, mother, his mother reported him missing around 8 a.m. So why was he saying he phoned the police? Which we didn't imagine was about half six twenty-seven sometime after she phoned him and had a look around the house and everything. When really she didn't phone he didn't phone the police, she did at 8 a.m. Right? And by then he's probably half part of the way home by then. Because he even said the police got here very quickly, within 10 minutes or something. How would he know the police got there within 10 minutes? Was he on the phone still to her? Or was he at home? Because if he was at home, then how the hell did he get from work? It takes three hours, three and a half hours. And she's phoning him at six, quarter past six. And he's behind by what? Foot past nine, half nine, the latest. And the police were phoned at eight, so the police were there by ten past eight. There's no way he could be there when the police arrived, not if he was at work. Could not happen. So there's no way he was at home when the police got there. So how did you know how long it took for the police? Oh. I just hope it isn't the mother. I just hope I don't want the mother to be involved. Yeah. How would he know it took 10 minutes? Unless he was on the phone to her and she's gone, the police are reading out. You know what I mean? So we knew it only took 10 minutes that way. Possibly. But there's too many ifs. There's too many, oh God. You know that feeling you get when something isn't jelly properly. Right? And you just know there's something wrong. There's something not right. It's like I said today. Was it yesterday? I found out what house that they lived at, right? Now, until that, I heard about this the yesterday, I think it was, or this morning, right? I never knew where they lived. I said every time I went along that road on Google Maps, I don't know what house they live at, so I can't point the house out. If I'd been the first one to find, find out, I still wouldn't have pointed it out. But this other YouTuber pointed it out. And when I seen the house, I thought, that's the house that every time I went past and I turned around on the map to come back down, you could see the two garages. You could see the garages from halfway up the road. 
and it stuck out. There's just something about those garages that stuck out to me. And I'll keep going back down to those garages and I'll linger around that area. Don't know why, but it wasn't until I'd seen it was that that was their house where they leave. I thought, flipping out. This is the same house that they live in that I kept coming back to every time I went to Google Maps. And I didn't know until then that they let that was their house. So oh god. I don't know what anyone I'm dreading waking up tomorrow. I'm really dreading I don't want to wake up tomorrow now, tomorrow morning. I might just go to sleep till the afternoon. <laughs> because I've just got a nasty feeling coming. I've got that feeling in the pit of my stomach. And it's not a good feeling. And some cases don't affect me. Like, you talk about harmony, Montgomery. And what she went through. That didn't affect me like this is. She wasn't. I did see some of it and I didn't get around to watching it because when I seen it, it was just coming up to me coming on, on the live. Oh my God, she got parole. Can't believe that. Well, I can because that's why she spoke. They, the prosecutor said, made that deal you you tell us about adam <coughs> <coughs> and what you know and we'll make sure that when your parole comes up you'll get your parole that was their deal but i still think she knows something she knows something more than what she was saying don't care what anyone says but that didn't affect me Probably it was my first case, my first case I was actually looking into. You know what I mean? So it didn't affect me, but this one, and that, that little girl went through hell. But this one is really affecting me, and I've got that. Oh. Well, I don't come to the UK because our justice system stinks to high hell. You think, you're, you think yours is bad? You haven't met our justice system. You really haven't. Right. So, don't come to the... Well, come to the UK for... Because the UK is a beautiful country. But the justice system stinks to high hell. Right. We've got murderers. Do you know, we've got a guy in prison. Right. Listen to this. He's been in there 50 plus years. Right, and he's never murdered anyone. Right, never murdered anyone. And the reason he's been in prison for 50 years was because he did get out once on parole, but then he broke parole, so he did get back up in prison. And every time he's in prison, he'd play up. Right, one stage he took, uh, he wanted to do a uh, painting and all this stuff. So they got this guy to come in to teach him painting and all this stuff, and he held him hostage, right? And that guy's never been able to go back to work since it happened. But he held him hostage, and they was always moving him from one prison to another prison to another. And now he's sent to summer, and all he wants to do is go and live somewhere quiet and do his painting. It doesn't want anything else, that's all the one. A little place somewhere quiet to do his painting. Right? And they won't parole, they won't let him out. But then you've got people who've gone in prison, right? He's seen people come and go. And people who have murdered people go in prison where he is and come out before he, he and he's never murdered anyone. 
but he's still in there. They won't release him. He said, he sent judges. He should be being out after 35 years. So for the last 15 years, he'd been fighting to get out and they won't release him. And he's never murdered anyone. Okay, he's held people hostage or whatever. But that was only so he'd get what he, he needed in prison. Right? You need to watch it. It's quite funny, the program. Uh, I'll find it out for you, Bronson or something like that. It's called Charles Bronson. He he, he renamed himself after the actor. Right? But he's now he's named himself something else. It goes, it goes on your other name now. But it's quite funny when you watch the film. But it's quite serious as well. Because what he does is serious. It's not, ha ha ha, that's so funny, sort of thing. It's funny in a way like, that, the way he puts it across. But the, the situations he put himself into was not funny. But, yeah, we've got people doing going in for murder and coming out after 10 years. And we've got pedos going off and coming out after, what, two to three months back on the streets. There's one guy we know, and I used to watch a lot of these um, pedo chasers who uh, chase down the pe these pedos, right? And there's one guy they kept finding, calling the police on, the police would come and take him away, and then literally two hours after they'd gone to the police station, he's back out on the street. Right? This is our justice system. They don't care about our children because they let the, they're letting these people who are hurting our children let loose on the street. But you don't pay your council tax or you don't pay this bill, they're locking you up for 18 months to two years. Where's the justice in that? They shouldn't be locking people up for that. They should be locking these kiddie figures up and these people who are killing people just because they can, not for 10 years, not for 15 or 20, they should be locking them up for life and they're not. And when we was with the EU, it was even worse, even worse, because we had to abide by the EU rules. So we was being told by a group of people in Europe Right? How long we could uh, send people to prison for? That's why we wanted to out the EU. And I must admit, since we come out the EU, I've noticed some cases they're getting like 35, 40 years now. So before, like, they probably got 15, 20 years. So, sweetheart, our justice system is just as bad as yours, just as bad. The only difference is, is when you ch when they get charged over there, they have 90 days then, right, to bring that case to court, yeah? Over here, it can take two years and more to bring a case to court. So, a lot of the time, the witnesses have forgot what they've seen or even passed away, maybe, you know what I mean? By the time it gets to court over here. So, you think your justice system is bad? So, I could tell you a lot about our justice system, <laughs> but I won't. But I think they've got to start coming down heavier. Right, with these people who are killing children. Okay, I'll say you, you probably won't let this video go out now. I'll get it out somehow. Right? Who are harming the children. They've got to start doing something because this is not right. 
right? He's probably spoke to his dad. Right? So, you know what I mean? Perhaps he did want to go on the internet to play games online with his friends, but the stepdad won't let him go on the internet. Perhaps that was one of the problems that was causing friction in the house. Because it was rumoured that the stepfather spoke to one of the neighbours saying uh, there was friction between him and his wife because of Sebastian. I don't think it's because of Sebastian. I think it's because he's an arrogant, controlling SOB, you know what I mean? Anyway, I've been on here way too long, babbling away. So that's the update so far. All right? I will be back on tomorrow. Hopefully, hopefully with some news that he wasn't at the tip. That's all I want to know, he wasn't there. Right. And I'll, I'll be checking up on Elijah Boo as well tomorrow. And who else? That's it so far. The others are all a waiting game now. Like you've got that one with Audrey Cunningham. That was a shame. But that's a waiting game now. We're just waiting to hear what what happens next. Right, and then we've got Madeline Soto and that fire creature and the mother. Right, so we've got that to come up. He's got to be charged yet, but they won't charge him yet with murder because if they do, they've got 90 days to put it in front of the judge. But at the moment, they've got plenty of time. No, they don't, because controlling people, they like every job specifically a certain way. Right? You can't do that with all children who are autistic. You have to do it. You, you literally have to fit your life into theirs. Right? You might, you might think, oh, he's weird. He's not. You just gotta see what how he sees life. You know what I mean? So if his routine is he gets up at six o'clock in the morning, he has a wash or he has breakfast, then goes and gets a wash and then gets dressed and then goes to school. You've got to stick to that routine. Now a lot of autistic children as well don't like do well. I won't say don't like, but they don't cope well where they're in shops. Believe me, I've seen it with my own grandson, and he's not even been diagnosed as autistic. He's got some traits of autism, and I know what it's like in shops. Right? He don't like loud noises, so we've got the earmuffs, earmuffling, sound reducing things. Um, so if you're wanting to go to the shops and you've got to take your child with you, they're not going to take too well to being dragged around shops. And someone who's controlling is going to want to do it their way. You will come to the shops, you will do this, you will do that. You can't do that. You have to listen to the child and work with the child. So I find myself, if I'm going to town with my grandson, or if I meet, say I meet my son and his wife in town with the kids, I will sit outside the shops in this area around the shopping arcade. I sit out there with them. You know what I mean? Where it's a bit quieter, where it's not so much noise and all this music being blasted through, through the speakers at different shops, all the different senses, the smells from all the different sort of shops. It's a sensory overload for an autistic child going shopping. 
sensory overload. They can't deal with it. So that could be another problem they have. Right? And my son tends to go, if he's got to go shopping, they go shopping later on the evening when it goes brighter. You know what I mean? If they've got to take the, the Ellis and the daughter, they go later on the evening. Before bedtime, obviously, but later in the day, when it goes up a bit quieter. But you can't, a controlling person does not fit in with a, a, an autistic one. It really doesn't. You've got, you've got to fall in line with their routine, not have them fall in line with your routine. Right? Because the more you push a child, to do something, especially an autistic child, to do something your way, the more they're going to fight back. And did you hear what they said? How he gets something in his head? It's like he's on a track. It's, it's just focused on that. And you're not going to move them. They're going to keep going up and saying what they want to say. So, I hope to God he, nothing has come up in book. It's not looking good. There's no sense of him anywhere around that house. Around them houses. You know what I mean? Apart from around his own house, there's no sense anywhere else. So he hasn't walked off anywhere unless he flew. Or unless someone picked him up in a car. Outside his house. But that would have been caught on a camera. A car coming along up that way late at night in the early hours of the morning is going to be picked up. You know what I mean? It's not as if a car can just drive up a road at, what, 3, three 2, 3 a.m. in the morning and not be seen on video and not look suspicious, especially if it's not a car that belongs in that area. But there's nothing like that either. Well, they haven't said there is. And what, and not only that, if they're looking in the teeth, right? That means they're looking at the family. Because if he'd been, say, he'd arranged someone to be picked up, and that person picked him up, then took him away, and analyzed him. That person is not going to drop him in the tip. Right? They're not. Family members do. Because that's the easiest way they can get a property, a body off a property without being seen. So, anyway. Thank you to everyone who's here tonight. Thank you, MG. Thank you, Ryan. And I'm sorry what I did to you, MG. I didn't mean to do that. I won't do it again. <laughs> and thank you to everyone else who's been watching on Twitter. Like I said, I've got, I've got a Facebook account just specifically for this. Right? It's nothing to do with my personal account. Uh, because that is my family personal. So thank you for being with me. And I am going to oh my god, I think I'm on to oh my god, I've been on here three hours. That's it. I'm going. Good night everyone. I've got to go. Being on here way too long. So oh god. I can't get this to flipping work now. Ugh. Okay, guys. Oh, before I go, if you like what you've heard and seen, can you give me a like? Can you share? And if you really want, can you subscribe? Thank you. Good night, everyone.